Hello, everybody. We are at the top of the hour uh, at the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. We are powered by StriveScan this evening, and we have some absolutely amazing institutions here to present and to give you some more information about themselves. The Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling has this amazing virtual college fair, and in order for it to be as amazing as it is, we just have some housekeeping items for you all to keep in mind just so that everything runs smoothly. So while you are uh, checking out these institutions and what they have to offer, you may have some questions and we 100% encourage them. So as your facilitator for tonight, I am asking you if you could please put your questions in the Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Your chat is disabled on your end, so you can't interact with the uh, presenters through the chat, but check out the chat as well because they might be putting some important information like application links or their contact, contact information in the chat. When you are asking a question through the Q&A button down below, please address the institution that the question is for so that they know who the question goes to. Also, please do not wait until the last minute to ask those questions. Feel free to ask questions at any time because unfortunately time flies uh, when you're having fun. And uh, you know, if you wait until the last minute, we won't have that live Q and A at the end with your question. So feel free to ask at any time. Also, this is uh, a webinar style virtual college fair. So your camera and microphone are turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. There are many, many more college uh, presentations offered. There are more happening in the next time slots, but also tomorrow as well. So you're more than welcome to go to strivescan.com backslash Minnesota in order to sign up for those. Last but certainly not least, maybe mom missed out on tonight, maybe cousin or your friend, or maybe you just want to relive tonight's fun. Well, guess what? You can because a recording will be available. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com com backslash Minnesota. Without further ado, again, my name is Sabelle Rossim. I'm your facilitator for tonight, but I would love to get started with our first institution, the College of St. Scholastica. Welcome, my name is Ollie Meyer. I'm from admissions at the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth. Um, my colleague Kyle Schoenwald will be here with me as well. We'll do a short presentation for you. I'm hoping everybody can see my screen. A little bit about the College of St. Scholastica, who we are. First of all, again, my name is Ollie Meyer and my colleague Kyle Schoenwald will be presenting with me tonight. Um, our students, we have about over 3,600 students at St. Scholastica on campuses in various places in Minnesota. Um, we have over 1,600 traditional undergraduate students at St. Scholastica. 82% of those students are from Minnesota. They represent 49 states plus the District of Columbia, 17 countries, and 14% of them are multicultural students. <clears throat> Hi everybody, I'm Kyle. Um, so one thing that you that Scholastica really stands by and something that we value um, is our Benedictine values. Um, I think you might have lost it there, Ali. I can't see oh, it. Is it back? Not yet. That's okay. So our Benedictine values, um, we have five of them. We have stewardship, hospitality, love of learning, respect, and community. Um, this is something that you'll hear a lot of at the College of St. Scholastica here. One thing that's really cool about it is that the college focuses on one of the values each year. And a lot of times the professors or faculty um, will also incorporate that value um, into their curriculum. So um, it's something that we're really passionate about and um, we all kind of preach um, whatever the value is that the college is focusing on for the year. Kyle, is the screen back? It is not. Oh, okay. Ollie, try and, and share your screen again. At the bottom, there's a, a green share screen button and, and go yeah. ahead and try it again. Okay, one moment, please. Sorry. If it, if it isn't working, oh, is it now? Well, there we go. I think we can, yeah, there you yep, go, we can see it. Sorry Click about on, that, you guys. My bad. Okay. Click on the uh, present button down at the bottom on the right, right by the minus sign, the subtract sign, bottom on the right. 
Okay, I'm looking for that. Bottom on the right. It's right by the subtract sign for the zoom. It's uh, the yep. icon. On, yep, there you go. There we go. Sorry right. again. I'm kind of technologically handicapped. I apologize for that. You're okay. No worries. A um, little bit about, and Kyle, did you just do this slide with Cicero? Yeah, yeah, you can go to the next one, Ali. Thank yep. you very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, great college town. We are in Duluth, Minnesota. We are the, the northernmost private college in the state of Minnesota. Um, Duluth is a wonderful city. There is over 18,000 college students in the city of Duluth um, between St. Scholastica, University of Minnesota Duluth, Lake Superior College. Duluth really likes college students. College students really like Duluth. Lots of wonderful opportunities. It's still a city of 85,000 people with a lot of wonderful entertainment opportunities, wonderful retail opportunities. But Duluth is a big small town with a lot of wooded trails, hiking opportunities, um, outdoor opportunities. One of the main reasons I chose St. Scholastica when I chose it was knowing my dad come up with the boat and tow and we could be on a lake in an hour. Lots of wonderful opportunities to be active in Duluth. And lots, Duluth really likes college students. So there's lots of experiential learning opportunities. Um, internship opportunities, many wonderful things that students can participate in. Okay, we'll try and get through our, our slides here. I know we only have about two minutes left. So, okay. um, so all of our classes are taught by faculty. Um, our ratio is 13 students you know, per one professor. Um, the class size is usually around 20 students. Um, our Dignitas course, which is the only required course of our freshmen is usually a little bigger because it's required of all and that's about 25, so. And Kyle just mentioned about Dignitas. We also have our, our general education requirements, which are called Veritas. They incorporate in cultural knowledge, competence, ethical reasoning, action, civic knowledge, lots of wonderful courses. There's a cornucopia of things you can choose from to fulfill general education at St. Scholastica. We have about 40, maybe a little more majors and minors. Um, nursing being our top, we are a big health science school, but we have a ton of business education, um, social work and music opportunities as well. We also offer graduate degrees at St. Scholastica in a variety of areas also. We have wonderful opportunities for our undergrads to have an advantage into our graduate programs as well. We have a four year pledge and what that means is that if you follow, you know, when you meet with your initial advisor, if you follow the curriculum that they set up for you, we guarantee that you'll graduate in four years. Um, and there's a really cool stat with that 97% that six months after students graduate, they've either been employed or have enrolled into a graduate post or graduate program post undergrad. Campus life. We have a very vibrant campus at St. Scholastica. We have a 56 nights program. That's every night of every weekend has a positive activity that students can participate in, as well as a wide variety of intramurals, club sports, festival opportunities, homecoming, community day is a day each semester where students are doing wonderful things in the community. Lots of activities for students to be active in. 31% of our students are student athletes. Um, and those are the, uh, the athletics that we offer, basketball, baseball, cross country. Um, okay. Also wonderful performing arts. Students have opportunities to be active in music and theater, all kinds of different opportunities there. Very welcoming to the music majors and the arts majors, as well as the non-music majors and arts majors. Most of our bands and choirs are made up of non-music and arts majors. Hi guys, I'll have to cut you off there. You're up on time. I'm super sorry. That's okay. No worries, we did our best. All right, thank you all so much. If you have any questions, for College of St. Scholastica, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have DePaul University. Hi, y'all. So my name is Gracie Covarrubias, and I am an admission counselor at DePaul University. I'm also what we call a double demon, which means I went to DePaul for both my bachelor's and my master's degrees. Loved it so much. I wanted to continue being part of the vibrant community. So my, my you all can see my screen. Sorry, it's been giving me trouble today. I'm assuming yes. Okay, so I'm going to kick us off. 
Amazing, thank you. I'm gonna kick us off with a little overview on DePaul. So we were founded in 1898, which means we've been around the block for quite some time. In our first year of operation, we had about 70 students, but now we have a total enrollment of about 24,000 students. And that very much situates us as a medium-sized university. What I love about DePaul is that even though we are a medium-sized university, we do maintain those small classroom sizes across the board. So of those 22,000 students, about 15,000 of them are undergraduate students and about 7,000 of those are graduate students. And we maintain a student to faculty ratio of about 15 to one, which means your average classroom size is gonna be 30 students. We are the nation's largest university with a primary mission of teaching and service, which means you are our top priority. We want you to be able to connect with our faculty members. We want you to have them as and to really lean on them to get the support that you need to succeed in school. Now, when it comes to DePaul, we are located in the city of Chicago. We actually have two campuses, our Lincoln Park campus on the north side of the city and then one downtown in the loop, which is our business district. So our students get the best of both worlds. You've got the hustle and bustle of the city, all those wonderful job and internship opportunities, and you still get that small liberal arts school feel, which we really do pride ourselves in. Now our campuses are dual campuses, so everything that's available on one campus is also available on the other. And as a student at DePaul, you transport yourself between both campuses by Train, you have what's called a U pass, which is an unlimited train or bus pass. It really is kind of like your golden ticket to the city of Chicago. Now, when it comes to our academic programs, we have over 300 of them to choose from at 10 different schools and colleges. I'm not going to go through all of them because we're very short on time, but I will highlight a top of our all-star programs. So we've got our College of Business, which is home to our accounting and finance cohorts. These programs get to work directly the big four accounting firms all across the city of Chicago to get you as a student internship opportunities that you need. Our College of Computing and Digital Media is home to a nationally ranked film and television program. So if you are interested in entering the world of cinema, this is definitely going to be the best space for you. Heart DePaul is a liberal arts university. So as I said, we have over 300 different programs to choose from. Many of our students will mix and match those programs. If you're interested in a double major, a minor or two or three, very great place for that because a lot of flexibility in our curriculum to start to figure out what it is that you want to study in school. Our College of Science and Health program is home to a fantastic pre-health advising cohort that's called the Pathways Honors Program. This is great for all of my students who are interested in going on to medical school. We take the guesswork out of applying to medical school and ensuring that you have fulfilled all those requirements and are well prepared for what is to come. Our theater school and our school of music are some of our oldest conservatories in the Midwest. They are very renowned. And if you're interested in either one of those programs, I definitely recommend checking out their FAQ practice pages, they do have their own separate application process. Now with all these schools and all these programs, we do offer a number of different combined degree program options. So if you're interested in getting a master's degree and just sticking around one extra year at DePaul, we can certainly make those dreams come true. Continuing your education is something that's really important for us to provide to you as a student. Now, we love to leverage the city of Chicago to provide you with those hands-on learning opportunities. It's no secret that there are so many different companies headquartered here in the city of Chicago, and each and every one of those is a partner to DePaul in one way or another. We have a full service career center that works with you literally as early as day one of college, so you can walk right in and start to figure out what you want your internship to be in. And when you're not hard in the city, you are playing hard in the city. So here at DePaul, we constantly encourage our students to go out into the city of Chicago. This is such an amazing place for sports, for food, for adventure, for theater, you name it. And we work on providing you access to all of those spaces. Even as a DePaul student, you get free entry into some of the most incredible museums in the world, which just so happen to be in the city of Chicago. And when you're not off campus, on campus, you can find that there is a vibrant student life. We have over 350 different student organizations to choose from, with a big focus on community service. So we don't have any community service requirements, but we see that our students are drawn towards opportunities to give back to the communities around them. And that's a big core value of DePaul's. Now, among those 350 different student organizations, we've got everything from Greek life to club sports to Dungeons and Dragons Club, you name it, a little bit of everything for everyone. So if you like what you heard, you're interested in hearing more, I've got some information up on the screen. Our application is pretty straightforward. We do use the Common App and we require an official high school transcript as well as a letter of recommendation from your high school counselor. We are a very proud test optional school, so we encourage you to take advantage of that. 
you are still considered for all the same scholarships, even if you apply test optional. Um, we've been test optional for close to a decade. So we're very proud of this policy and want to continuously encourage you students to take advantage of that. Our early action program deadline is November 15th. So please apply by November 15th. It is always better to know sooner rather than later. If you do decide to wait, you can wait until February 1st, which is a regular notification deadline. Now I'll drop my contact information in the screen or in the chat. I know this was a lot of information, but please, please, please reach out if you have any questions or curiosities. We are here to help. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for DePaul University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Full Sail University. Hey everyone, my name is Emily and I'm here to talk to you about Full Sail University this evening. So if anyone has not heard of Full Sail, we are an entertainment, media, art, and technology school over in Orlando, Florida. So I'm just pulling up my slideshow. We're actually in a section of Orlando called Winter Park. It's a suburb a little bit on the outside. We're about 30 minutes from the theme parks um, and very close to some really, really cool companies and technology, uh, technically the technology corridor of Florida. Um, but Full Sail in general is a proud supporter of creativity. As you can see here, we deal with programs such as recording arts. If you want to be somebody that works in music or maybe you're interested in going into the film industry, we have a program that deals with film. Um, we also have several gaming degrees. So we'll get into that. Um, I am going to let a quick video kick us off, show you a little bit about Campus Center programs, and then I'll give you some more information. that video it said if you are serious about your dream we'll take your dream seriously that is full sales motto and has been since we started uh, if you have a creative dream that you were wanting to pursue you think about it day and night you know it's your dream your passion that's what we want to help you achieve so in the college search process if you are interested in one of these areas definitely take a look at full sale and see what we could provide we actually offer 54 bachelor's degrees right now between our on-campus and online programs and they fall into any or one of these different categories so if you see one of those that stands out you're like yes i'm interested in tech or i'd love to go into sports just send me a message or i'll give you my email toward the end and i'll be able to give you more information each of our programs though is a little bit different than what you may expect the first thing that is different is that all of our programs are accelerated so instead of taking four years to complete your bachelor's degree, which is traditional, at Full Sail, we cut that time in half. So it actually takes roughly 20 months, just shy of two years to complete an on-campus bachelor's degree program, and then around 29 months to complete an online program. Reason being is the online programs are more geared towards students that will probably be working at the same time. The next one, start anytime. We do have a rolling admissions. You can apply throughout the year, but we also have a rolling start date. So instead of having to wait for the next semester to begin, once you know you're ready to start at Full Sail, you could start in the next month or you could wait until the next year. It always, uh, we're always moving along and we start a new class every single month. Next, this has come back anytime. This is a huge benefit of Full Sail. We invite our students to come back and retake courses for free after graduation. This is really important as technology changes, you know, software, hardware, computers, game consoles, they're changing every year. They're getting more advanced. So our students are invited to come back and relearn this technology. That way they can stay current in their industries. And the last thing here is that we have each student work on a portfolio through the life of their program. When they graduate, they then have a collection of their best work that they can show employers when they're trying to search for jobs. They also take seven career module courses in things like resume writing, networking, interview skills. That way they're not only prepared to do their future job, 
they're also prepared to get a future job. And our graduates have gone on to work on some pretty cool projects. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because I know time is running short today, um, but I did wanna highlight a few. This past spring, we had over 140 of our graduates that went on to win Oscar or be Oscar nominated. This spring, we've had 57 graduates so far that have been Grammy nominated. And back in December, we had 271 of our grads that ended up working on game award winning games, including The Last of Us 2, which as you probably know, was game of the year. And graduates have gone on to work for sev several other big companies. These are just a few. Um, one of my favorite is Disney Pixar, lots of cool animated movies that our graduates have worked on. But you can see here, we also have graduates with the Golf Channel, HBO, Miami Dolphins. It's not just movies, it's not just games, it's all across the board. So I'm gonna get through this next one because I'm running out of time. But if you have questions about any of the things that are showing up on the board, just let me know. I do want to give you some information about what to do next. Maybe any of these programs sound like a good fit for you. You have a creative dream. You know you're interested in music or film or something like that. What is the next step? The first thing that you would do is reach out to an admissions counselor, just like most of these other schools. Um, at Full Sail, our admissions interview is the most important part of our um, admissions process. So give them a call. They'll give you more information about your requirements. Know that we do not require the minimum or a minimum GPA or a minimum SAT or ACT score. We are test to optional. Here is some more information. If you do have more questions, um, you can scan the QR code for more information, or you can email me at elmiller at wholesale.com. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, Sybil, thank you so much for facilitating. And again, just let me know if you have any questions. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Full Sail University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Lawrence University. Hi there, um, my name is Brendan Nabosny. I'm one of the assistant directors at Lawrence University located in Appleton, Wisconsin. And I've had the pleasure of working with students from Minnesota for just over three years now. Um, bear with me while I share my screen really quick. Perfect. Um, so, uh, Let's get started. So what is Lawrence University? So Lawrence is located in Appleton, Wisconsin, about four hours east of the Twin Cities. Um, we have a direct flight from um, Minneapolis to Appleton on Delta. Um, so it's very easy to get to Appleton. We're also about 20 minutes south from Green Bay. So if you're a football fan, very easy to go to those Packer Viking games. We are a completely undergraduate only university. And the reason why we can call ourselves a university is because we're made up of two degree giving bodies. So we have the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and we also have the Conservatory of Music. About 75% of our students are pursuing a degree through the College of Arts and Sciences, while the other 25% of our students are pursuing a degree through the Conservatory of Music. The Conservatory of Music is an open conservatory. So what that means is if a student has a music interest, but does not want to commit to being a music major, um, maybe they just really enjoy music, they want to be a music minor, things like that, you can still be involved with music at Lawrence. So about 50% of our total campus population is involved with music in some way. Um, so 50% of our students are involved with music, 50% are not involved with music. And that's okay, because I always say we need audience members. Students who are, students who are involved with music um, will eventually develop a strong relationship with the arts just because it will be all around you. The city of Appleton also has a really strong music theater and arts presence as well. Um, we are 1500 students, so su super small, super intimate, and we're a residential only campus. So our students do live on campus all four years. We have an eight to one student to faculty ratio with your average class size being about 12 to 13 students. So you're gonna really develop strong relationships with your faculty members. And being an undergraduate only university, that means all of our faculty are teaching their own classes. We don't have any TAs on campus. You won't be taught by any grad students or anything like that. You will develop relationships with your faculty members. In the College of Arts and Sciences, our most popular majors, um, are things in the STEM field. So right now, biology, chemistry, physics, biochemistry, those are huge for us right now, um, especially because there's so many great research and internship opportunities that come with those fields. Um, for example, you can start research as early as your freshman year, beginning with uh, student to student research, and then starting your sophomore year, you begin that student to faculty research, again, really developing those strong relationships with your faculty members. 
Now let's kind of go through your Lawrence journey. So your first year, you'll begin with some of your general education courses, as well as classes in your major, as well as first year studies. This is a class that all students are required to take regardless of major um, and is kind of a rite of passage at Lawrence. We've been offering first year study, studies since the 1960s. Um, so if you ever meet a Lawrence alum, they will ask, what did you think of Plato's Republic? Because every student has to read Plato's Republic. Um, basically, you'll be in a class with students not from your major being taught by a professor not from your major. It's a way for you to make connections outside of your major bubble um, and learn how to approach things from the liberal arts mindset because at our core we are a liberal arts university. You'll learn how to read, write, think critically, and discuss critically, and learn how to apply everything back to your major. So how does learning about this piece of music apply back to being a biology major, for example? Then you'll take everything you learned from first year studies and apply to what we like to call the messy middle, which are your sophomore and junior years. Um, you'll be taking classes for your major, doing research, internships, projects, all that wonderful stuff, as well as things outside of campus. You'll be going um, on uh, study abroad opportunities, um, internship opportunities. About half of our student population does study abroad at some point during their Lawrence career and all of your scholarships do transfer with you abroad as well. So a term abroad is the same cost as a term on campus. The only additional cost is that plane ticket over and plane ticket back. So it's a really affordable option to go study abroad and really experience that. Students, in addition to music, clubs, activities, um, we also offer uh, athletics as well. We have just, we have 22 uh, division three varsity athletics with our newest one being women's hockey. They are currently in their first season right now and it's going incredibly well for them and we're super excited about that. Um, but if you're not an athlete, that's okay. Um, you can always go and cheer on the Vikings, but we also have plenty of different opportunities. We have over 150 different campus organizations and students do get involved with a lot of different things. At Lawrence, we are on a term schedule. So we do three 10 week terms instead of two 14 week semesters. And during your 10 week terms, you're only taking three classes per term. So students realize in addition to their three classes, they do have opportunities to fill in the holes with a lot of different clubs and organizations, volunteer work, things to get involved with the Appleton community as well. Um, one of the most unique things about Lawrence that I should talk about really quick is Bjorklinden, which is our lodge in Lake Michigan. This is a lodge specifically for our students to go visit during uh, the academic year, absolutely free for them to visit and a way for them to get off campus. So classes will go up there to do research, organizations go up there to do um, retreats, things like that. And with time winding down, I should mention that we are open for campus visits currently. So come visit us in Appleton. We are doing one family per tour guide tours, um, socially distance, mask wearing, um, so super safe, um, but we do allow you to come to campus. In terms of applying, we are a free application, both Common App and Lawrence App, and we are test optional. We've been test optional for just over 10 years. So come, re come to Appleton, come hang out at Lawrence, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Lawrence University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have North Hennepin Community College. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Maddie Chuba and I'm from North Hennepin Community College right here in the Twin Cities. Um, so we'll be going through just a couple fast facts about North Hennepin. Um, like Sybil said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Our admissions email and phone number is there for contact. If you have additional questions, our website is easily accessible um, and has additional information as well. Some fun facts about North Hennepin, we are part of the Minnesota State um, System, which includes 30 technical and community colleges and seven state universities across the state of Minnesota. Like I said, we are located in Brooklyn Park, just north of the Twin Cities, so makes us really centralized to a lot of activities um, in Minnesota, in the state of Minnesota and connections in the community. Um, we serve just under 10,000 students um, and 68% of our students do attend part-time. So when we get back to campus and you get to see those smiling faces, it does seem a lot smaller um, just because of that part-time feel. We also have online courses um, and blended as well. Our average class size is 21. So again, you get to know your peers and your professors and you're a name rather than a number. Um, and our average student age at North Hennepin is 25. So a little bit um, over that traditional age um, going into a university. At North Hennepin, we offer over 30 associate degree programs and then a variety of certificates, which I'll show you and we'll get into just a little bit more. 
this is a full list of our associate degrees and each year I feel like we're adding to it um, just based on the demands of the growing um, field of workforce. But in bold with the little stars next to it are some of our more popular programs. Um, so liberal arts, business, computer science, law enforcement, criminal justice, and nursing is probably one of our most popular. Um, next to each of those, if you see MNTC, that is the Minnesota Transfer Curriculum, meaning that general education courses are transferable to any school in the state of Minnesota. Um, and the TP next to the programs are our transfer pathways. And those transfer pathways, we have articulations um, and partnerships set up with four-year universities around the state of Minnesota so that all of the credits that you earn in an associate's degree are completely transferable into those programs at the university, which is an awesome opportunity for our students. This is a list of all of our certificate degrees. Um, so our certificates are all 30 credits or less. Um, so more short-term programming. Um, they're, they're mainly built on previous work experience or if you have um, any short-term interest or trying to gain that extra boost um, in your current job. Um, our personal training certificate is actually the only certificate that we have um, that you can go directly out into the workforce and get a job. Um, a lot of these are meant to build on additional programs or associate degrees. Um, some of our more popular certificates are our American Sign Language um, and you're credited to be you know, interpreter after you receive that certificate, which is an awesome, awesome ability. Um, then we, our partnerships, um, we have a university center at North Hennepin, and these are the four schools that we partner with. Um, they each have different academic programs or bachelor programs that they offer. Um, their faculty travel to North Hennepin, so an awesome opportunity for our students because we are so centralized um, and a great local um, school for our students is without traveling to these schools, the faculty come to us and you're able to earn your bachelor's degree on North Hennepin's campus. Um, so again, there's 13 bachelor degrees from each of these um, or within each of these schools that you can learn more about. And then student support resources. As a North Hennepin student, you will be supported every step of the way. So we're just gonna touch on a couple different ones um, that you'll definitely take advantage of. So first is academic advising. Um, you'll meet with them for orientation, registration, course planning. We have transfer advisors if you're thinking about going to a four-year university. Um, and then they also help create graduation plans. Access services, um, if you have an IEP or a documented disability, you can receive any type of accommodations um, and they have support services as well. Our TRIO program um, is for first generation low income or if you have a documented disability scholarship program. Um, they have more personalized and one-on-one -on -one advising and tutoring support services. Our counseling and career center, um, so our care center has a variety of resources um, for uh, for students, whether that's one-on-one -on -one counseling, we have a social worker on campus. If you have any support needs in terms of food, housing, transportation, um, or anything along those lines, they are a great resource. And then our career center, if you need help with writing a resume or need a, a cover letter looked at or interested in different internships around the, the Brooklyn Park area or Twin Cities, um, they are a great resource um, to set you up for success moving outside of North Hennepin. Tutoring services, um, we have peer tutors and professional tutors, a math resource center, writing center, um, and also online learning in this virtual world that we're in. Um, all of these services are able um, to be offered to our students remote. Um, our library is fully stocked. We do have food services. The student health clinic is a, a great resource for our student that is free um, with your student ID. It's a Fairview clinic, um, so you can definitely take advantage of that as well. We do have student life clubs and orgs, as well as fitness and recreation programs, intramurals, performing arts, and then our diversity and equity center hosts different events each month as well. Tuition and fees, just to break it up real quick, um, this we charge per credit, and this is again before financial aid and scholarships um, that we have advisors that will work with you on. If you are interested in learning more, we do have another event coming up on April 13th um, where you'll get to meet one on one, talk with faculty and staff um, and learn more about North Hennepin. So you can get more information on our website. Thank you for listening. If you do have any additional questions, I'll put all of my contact information in the chat.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Madison. If you have any questions for North Hennepin Community College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have Texas Christian University. Hey, everybody. My name is Jill Countryman. Let me share my screen here. Um, okay. Hope you guys are all having a great night. Thanks for skipping dinner to, to learn a little bit more about Texas Christian University. As I said, my name is Jill. I work with students in seven different states um, in the upper Midwest. I'm actually based out of Chicago because we have a lot of students from the Midwest at TCU. Um, specifically speaking, we are a medium-sized private university. We have students from all 50 states, over 75 different countries. And if we look at students from the United States. We have the most students from Texas and then California and then Illinois. But look at Minnesota. Minnesota is tied for number nine with Florida. So we could use at least one or two more Minnesota students so that Minnesota can squarely be in ninth place for next year. Uh, we're located in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth is in north central Texas. We're on one side of the Dallas-Fort Worth airport and Dallas is on the other side. Uh, Fort Worth is a great city. It's actually the 13th largest city in the U.S. And so it's a sizable city to make sure that you have those opportunities for career shadowing and volunteer experiences and just really fun things to do when you're away at college. Um, we have a really active campus at TCU with phenomenal fine arts programs. Um, we're actually building the brand new Van Cleburne Performing Arts Hall. Um, we are a Division I athletic school. We're part of the Big 12 Athletic Conference, and our students are able to get into every home athletic activity um, for free. You just walk over with your student ID and boom, you're in the women's basketball game or at the football game. We have over 300 different clubs and organizations at TCU. Um, everything from, you know, the bass fishing team to the chemistry club, fraternity sororities. We even have a Christian sorority and a Christian fraternity. Our residence halls, uh, we're a great place for students to live. The Princeton Review has actually rated TCU's residence halls number four in the country. And the oldest residence hall at TCU um, is at, was actually built um, back in 2006. So they're amazing residence halls. And our freshmen or first year students live can live in eight of the 16 residence halls. Um, even though we're medium sized, it's kind of a small school feeling at TCU. For every 13 full time undergraduate students, we have one full time professor, and our average class size is 27 students in a class. We offer 130 different majors and minors, everything from modern dance to nursing, education, and even ranch management. I've never had a student from Minnesota who's applied to study ranch management, but maybe next year. <laughs> uh, we are a liberal arts-based university, so regardless of what a student is majoring in, they're going to be required to take that general education or core curriculum requirement. You have a lot of flexibility within that. Um, during your four years at TCU, about one third of your classes will be classes that are in your major. Another one third would be classes toward a minor or your electives. And the final one third of your classes during your four years at TCU would be classes taken for this core curriculum. Our title, Texas Christian University, is a denominational reference. We are affiliated with the Disciples of Christ denomination. Um, it's a Protestant denomination. Um, and so that nickname for the Disciples of Christ is the Christian Church or the DOC. So our title represents the Christian Church denomination. We do have over 60 faith backgrounds and over 25 different uh, faith-based activities and clubs on our campus. Students at TCU are required to take one religion class within their four years as part of our core curriculum. Real quickly, I want to talk about the application process. Um, we have four different applications that you can use. The TCU application, the common application, because we're located in the state of Texas, you can also apply to us through the com the Apply Texas application, and then we're also on the coalition application. 
We have two different deadlines at TCU. Our November 1st deadline would be for early decision binding or early action and non-binding. And then we have our final um, round of decisions for regular decision. In fact, our final group of um, admission decisions are going to be posted on Friday. So there are a lot of students waiting for that answer. I want to let you guys know that we were test optional this year, and we will be test optional at least for students applying next year and the year after. Um, if you're a student who has taken the exam or plans to take the ACT or SAT, and you feel that your scores really represent you and you're proud of them, please feel free to submit your test scores if you'd like. We have a do no harm policy. So if a student submits their test scores and I as the admission counselor see them and I'm kind of like, oh gosh, I wish they wouldn't have submitted them. I'll just pretend like I never saw your test scores. Um, but really, um, we're test optional. You have that choice. Holistic admission process, we're looking mostly at academics, but also at your activities or co-curricular things, your essay, and of course, your um, those recommendation letters from your teacher and your counselor. Um, as I said, my name is Jill Countryman. Um, I'm the only Jill in the admission office, so it's easy to find me if you need to. Um, I A couple of updates. I want to let you guys know we are the Horned Frogs at TC. You. Go Horn Frogs. Um, I earned my master's degree at TCU and I absolutely love TCU. I've worked there for 17 years. Last but not least, um, I want to let you know we've been open for visits for a long time. Do wear a face mask. We do require it at TCU, even though we're located in Texas. Thanks, you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jill. Um, if you have any questions for Texas Christian University, please quickly put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. I also recommend, since we are at the end of the session, uh, to please follow up with Jill Countryman uh, if you do have any other questions, as well as the other institutions. Uh, at this point in time, I would love to invite back our uh, presenters for this evening to kind of just help me wrap up the session here. Uh, we are at kind of the last minute or two. Uh, I do want to thank you all as presenters and panelists for this evening. Thank you so much. Despite uh, technical difficulties, Wi-Fi connection, connection issues, and just sheer it being uh, a Wednesday, uh, you all got through it. And uh, we absolutely, absolutely appreciate it. And time really does you know, fly when you're having fun. I warned everybody of this in the very beginning, and, and here we are 45 minutes later. So thank you. Uh, for our attendees, thank you so, so much. We had some amazing institutions here this evening, and I hope that you got some amazing uh, information. You either screenshot it, took notes, whatever it took to make sure that you got all of that down. With that said, I want to thank you all so, so much for joining. Uh, again, the uh, M-A-C-A-C. -A -C. Uh, with that said, I want to say just a quick few things. Uh, you'll have a quick survey uh, that'll pop up once you close out your window. It'll be four question survey, my attendees. We love your feedback. So please, please give us that feedback if you can. Also sign up for more sessions. We have a ton of other college presentations going on, not only this evening in the next time slots, but also tomorrow. We have tons of sessions going on tomorrow as well. Uh, with that said, also a recording will be available. Like I mentioned earlier, if maybe mom missed out, your cousin wants to check them out, whatever it is, you will have a recording available to you at strivescan.com backslash Minnesota. With that said, everybody, thank you all so, so much for attending, and I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you.